Artificial intelligence, AI. Algorithms. AI. The age of artificial intelligence is here. Once the domain of science fiction and blue sky research, we now use AI to write essays, diagnose diseases and create art. And according to experts, this is only the beginning. So how will AI change our societies in the coming years? We'll explore four key impacts of the dawning AI revolution. And we'll start with the field that's likely to have the most immediate effect on most of us, work. What do you think? Could your job, or at least parts of it, be automated? No? Well, don't count on that too much. No profession is really safe. So the moment we have you know, aspects of our work that are about reproducible patterns, this part can be reproduced very easily by machines. That's a moment of reckoning. Five years ago, many experts still predicted that AI would primarily replace low-skilled jobs, like file clerks in administration or workers on the assembly line. But the recent rise of systems called JetGPT, DALI or MidJourney has proven them wrong. So-called generative AI is becoming better and better at doing creative work, an area long considered more or less safe from automation. People with actually very little skills can just by using some prompts or inserting some prompts into an interface produce um, art, pictures, um, novels possibly, videos. So it, it's also these, these creative jobs that are increasingly being threatened, I would say, by automatic reproduction. Already today the systems can write basic news articles at a faster pace than human journalists. This raises questions about the future of journalism and the role of human journalists in a world increasingly dominated by AI technology. Oh, and by the way, my last sentence was written by JetGPT. AI systems are also getting better at writing code, to the point where they're starting to rival human programmers. And they are taking on tasks from legal assistants, such as doing research or reviewing contracts. Make no mistake, the systems are prone to errors and they require human oversight. But they are capable of completing tasks that previously took days within hours or even minutes. That's why they're likely to soon become standard tools used by everyone in their daily work. And then, what can we do with this increased efficiency? One way would be to say, well, you know, why don't we go to reduce the working hours? But if history is anything to go by, chances aren't great. Technology in general has always been sold with a promise of reducing work and freeing work for other types of stuff, and it never happened. That brings us to the second area where AI will have a major impact, intellectual property. Whenever individuals create works of the mind, such as text, images or designs, there are regulations in place to ensure they're compensated if someone else uses their work. But what if AI systems come up with articles, songs or logos? Who owns the copyright? No one? The programmers? The AI systems themselves? And what about those whose work was used to train the systems? This is a really tricky question and uh, there's already ongoing um, cases in, in, a court, in courts of law uh, trying to sort of uh, set, the, set the borders and the boundaries. What's key to understand here is that AI systems do not create anything out of thin air. Instead, they are trained by analyzing vast amounts of texts, photos, paintings or videos they find online. Which means that they're trained on the work of the same creatives they're threatening to replace. And resistance is rising. Photo agency Getty Images, for instance, is now suing AI company Stability AI for using its photos. We'll likely see more of those lawsuits in the coming years. And the fact that AI is now capable of producing convincing fake content is also raising more and potentially even darker concerns, which leads us to the third way in which AI will transform society. Take a look at these photos of the Pope apparently wearing a white puffer jacket instead of his typical Greca. They look pretty real, don't they? Well, they're not. The photos were published on Twitter by a user who had created them with an AI image generator. Examples like that illustrate how AI technology is making it easier and cheaper than ever to create fake content. And many worry that this could supercharge a phenomenon 
that's already one of the most significant threats to our democracies. There's been talk about mass producing misinformation online, um, uh, which is currently mainly done uh, you know, manually in the sense that there's large numbers of people in so-called troll factories uh, that uh, produce misinformation and uh, intervene in online conversations on social media and elsewhere. Uh, and this, if this can be, and when this can be automated uh, on a massive scale, then of course there's, uh, there's a kind of a whole le new level of concern. And then there's a fourth area where AI is somehow quietly disrupting society. Around the world, governments and companies are increasingly using AI to automate decisions. In social welfare, in, in predictive policing, or in policing in general, there's an increasing use of decision support systems, software that is producing risk scores in order to support decision-making processes. The use of these systems has the potential to drastically alter someone's life, whether it's to determine who's offered a job, who is eligible for social benefits, or who should be granted early release from jail. To a certain deg degree can be beneficial, but it's also been shown that many of these systems reproduce societal injustices. Several studies have shown that unchecked AI systems are susceptible to replicating or even exacerbating existing forms of discrimination. In a recent report, the German Ethics Council, the leading ethics body in Germany, therefore recommends that machines should only assist in decision making and not make decisions entirely on their own, which sounds good, but how do you strike the right balance? What we're basically saying, and I think this is, uh, and, and I, well, I'm afraid that this may be not very satisfying initially, is that it's in the nitty gritty. So basically you have to look into the ex exact details of how a technology is developed, how the interface looks. So let's put some flesh on the bones. Let's say AI systems are used, for example, in a courtroom. That's something that uh, we really need to have uh, cautious and be really responsible on how to use AI properly. In collaboration with researchers at Columbia University, Selena Botino's NGO investigated how AI could be used in Brazil's court system. We learned that uh, there are lots of possibilities that AI really can help make judicial procedures like faster and help expedite the the decision-making process, but then like final decisions and really uh, making the last, like having the last say, uh, I don't think we, we can and we should uh, uh, put any machine in place of, uh, of humans. So all things considered, what's next? What steps should we take to brace our societies for this era of artificial intelligence? Societies operate on, on rules and um, commonly agreed uh, uh, ways of doing things. Um, and I think that we're definitely going to have to revise uh, such rules. There is a certain role to play for politics and for uh, lawmakers in order to set the rules, to set the boundaries about what is responsible use and what can and can't be done, to not leave it all uh, to companies to do whatever they want to do. Any uh, law regarding regulation of technology has to be made by all people with working in all different sectors and then including uh, people from like developers, people from the industry, people from academia that are working on and studying impacts like philosophy, ethicists, other than just like lawmakers. The age of AI has arrived and while its potential benefits are vast, so are the risks. That's why, as companies compete to release the next generation of AI systems, the experts we talked to agreed that rules are needed for when it's acceptable to assign things to machines and when it isn't. Policymakers from Brussels to Brasilia are already in the process of drafting such regulations. But time is a critical factor, because the genie is out of the bottle. And if decision makers don't act quickly, they might soon find themselves outpaced by the same technology they seek to govern.